the thing is, I mean, we follow this stuff all the time. So none of these are shocking to me. These are the th right. same things we've talked about a gazillion times. The average person out there, maybe they heard it once. Maybe they never heard it because they follow it like a normal, healthy human being does. Um, but uh, it, this also, I think, would would reelicit some of those thoughts. Oh, yeah, I do remember hearing about that. And it just kind of puts it more fresh in their mind again. And we're nowhere near picking a jury pool yet. I know. And also the questions that she's asking are questions that make Koberger look guilty. That's another weird part about all this. This would almost, I mean, not that the, the prosecution would be sending out a questionnaire like this. I don't really know what their purpose would be either. But these are like things that you would, you know, either ask on the stand or you would ask when you are specifically going and doing jury selection uh, yeah, at that I moment mean, so in time. It, it was interesting. It was interesting because if, she didn't ask any of the questions that she might use as part of her defense. This is what the questions that the prosecution is going to use, because if I was on the defense, I'd be asking questions, you know, when you want to sow doubt, which I thought her mm -hmm. real modus operandi here was sow doubt in a potential jury pool. So you'd send out maybe a questionnaire saying, have you heard that not all DNA evidence is 100 percent conclusive? Yeah. Have you heard about the possibility of being an of there being a possible alibi or numerous alibis, you know, to Koberger's location that night? I mean, there's other questions that she could ask if she's trying to sow seeds of doubt in a community. But she literally just laid out all the questions of what uh, social media and the prosecution have been talking about the entire time. So you're just wondering what's the play i don't know have you heard you can have it your way at burger king that i thought was an odd <laughs> one to throw in there oh it's not a laughing matter not I know, but really geez. relating to it but <laughs> that actually burger king actually would relate to the uh, the montgomery story because they went to burger king uh after they realized that they had killed their yeah. daughter uh but uh yeah i mean it's it, it's just it, it's baffling uh, and, and the ethics of it too. I and I, I I'm not a lawyer. I know you're not either. But I I do wonder uh, what sort of consequences could come here of this from that judge. I mean uh, I I don't know what what the uh, the ramifications could be. I know there's there's censure. There's uh, different you know penalties that come. But I mean is it possible? Uh, we've seen in other cases where a judge, uh, for example, uh, unjustly in many of our opinions. Uh, in the case of Delphi, Indiana, removed the attorneys because they viewed that they were doing uh, the 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 excuse they used so that the the evidence that they had was uh, leaked out of their office on purpose. We know that that truly was not exactly true right. how that went, but I I do wonder. Uh, you know, Ann Taylor has been doing a pretty damn good job for him so far, at least trying to paint that picture of of innocence or at least reasonable doubt in some way, shape, or form. Right. Is she going to get herself booted at some point for being a bit too aggressive? Or that was her plan to begin with, you know, make a <laughs> yeah. big make a big name for herself, you know, show her show her great chops and then the judge removes her so she has the victim um so she can claim that she's a victim of the system and then she'll get hired by someone that she thinks she can win for. I, I honestly have no idea. I mean, that's, we don't That's an interesting one. I yeah. I, I haven't even thought of that one, but this is one of those cases where it twists and it turns and you never know exactly well, it's where an it's going. Because, you know, Tony, it's really an outlier, you yeah. know, from everything that you just laid out. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's done a great job to this point of sowing potential seeds of doubt in everyone, you yeah. know, and you're like, and so every time she was doing something, you're like, huh, that could play well before a jury. Yeah. Hmm, that's a little bit of doubt right there. You know, even, even just to claim that there's a potential, um, alibi out there makes you go oh huh. even if one doesn't materialize it makes you think well maybe mm -hmm. someone did know and they just didn't come forward but this one this action just seems so incongruent again when we're looking at behavior yeah. arcs of individuals this is just an outlier and when there's an outlier to what we see as a behavior arc of what we presume to be her objective of sowing doubt it makes you say that well there's an objective she has that we're unaware of Gosh. What is that objective that we're unaware of? Because she th says, because in her mind, this is congruent with what she wants to achieve. We just don't know what she wants to achieve. I think that is the bigger question here as well. Yeah, I think you're right. What does she want to achieve with this? Does she want off? Does she realize that she's in a case where you can't win this? I mean, I think pretty much everybody feels that way. You'd hope your attorney thought thinks maybe a little different, but everybody hits a brick wall at some point, and. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's like death by your own sword 
uh, if that's the goal. I'm not saying that that's her goal, but it certainly does make you wonder uh, what what the goal here is. Without any other evidence or details or knowledge of her objectives, you know, it, it's, it allows for people to have their conjecture about anything. Yeah. And yeah. that's what she's really done. She's really kind of thrown the, the box open. It's like, what was that about? What do you think in your mind? And if now, granted, if she think it was congruent with her sowing seeds of doubt, and that was her objective, and, and our conjecture that there is something we don't know what she's trying to achieve, then she's missing a critical thing in life. And that's a loving critic to say, what were you doing that for? In other yeah. words, she's, she's um, putting actions into an echo chamber of her own voice, and she's not getting good feedback on it. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre. Uh, we'll see where that, uh, where that leads us here. Uh, but not weeks. bizarre to her. That's what the interesting point is. She should have talked to Robin Drake before she sent that thing out. <laughs> <laughs> I always think so. <laughs> hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.